Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. Thank you very much for being with us. We have this wonderful show called Papa's World. And what we do, Papa's World, meaning Papa Hemingway, is talk about local books, chance to exchange some ideas with local authors. And we want you to know that, hey, you've got these wonderful books coming out of uh, the Eastern Shore, and specifically Queen Anne's County. I'm delighted to have with us today Peggy Jagley. Peggy, th Peggy, thank you very much for being with us. Your name, I want you to know I've been <laughs> memorizing it for a week and I've blown it six times already. Oh, you're doing fine. We'll be all right. <laughs> Peggy, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live. I live right here in Centerville. Okay, you're Centervillean. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Lifelong resident or fairly new? Or? No, I um, originally grew up in Ohio. Okay, where are and, you? Ohio? Um, in a little Polish town, the suburb of Toledo, Ohio. Oh, Toledo, okay. Mm -hmm. Very good, okay. And born and raised there? Yes. How, now, how long did you stay there? Um, most of my life, and okay. then um, as my husband got transferred to different states, then kind of became a vagabond and moved <laughs> here to Maryland because okay. it's where we wanted to retire by the water. Beautiful. Now, hey, I don't want to leave Ohio yet. In your bio, you sent me, and it immediately jumped out at me. Uh -huh. You wrote your first book at eight? Was I correct? Yes. Okay, yes. tell me about that. <clears throat> well... Um, I started writing because my mother always made us write thank you notes okay. uh, to everyone. Handwritten thank, hand you, written thank you notes. Handwritten thank you notes. A lost art, right? Yes. Lost art. And so I started writing in rhyme, and I just discovered at a very young age I liked writing. You wanted to be a writer. And so I wrote a, a children's book, which I'm actually going to publish. And at eight put years in, old? At Kendall. Yes, it was like why the giraffe's neck is long, <laughs> why great. the elephant has a trunk, oh, and stuff. I made up. Um, all the reasons why you know why the different animals had their unique feature. Now, were any writers in the family, or is this just something Peggy? Pe I mean, is mom, dad, or someone? No. My mother writes well, but okay. I'm the only writer You're in the, the family. Writer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about high school. Now, high school, a writer, new school newspaper, or that was no, no. Oh, okay. I did. I, I worked on the school newspaper, also the college um, newspaper. After I spent a year in Europe. Okay. So I came just back. Just traveling around Europe. Um, well, I I did my junior year abroad in oh, Austria great, great. and came back and wrote for the college newspaper about okay. the different customs. Now where were you going to school? University of Toledo? Uni U um, no. University of Salzburg. Okay. And um, I went to college in Kino uh, Carthage College in Kenosha. Oh, sure. But the program was um, through Bowling Green State University okay, right, to okay, go to Europe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So writing is just in your blood for some reason. Yes. You enjoy it and had a good time. Yes. Now tell me about uh, high school writing days and college days. You were the super reporter or what type of stuff? I just loved writing. So it when, what? whenever high school teachers said you can take an exam or you write a term paper, okay. most okay. kids took the test. I took the term paper okay, because I, I knew that I could do that you well, like and I work. enjoyed it. Good for you. Well, I can control a term paper. Uh, sure you can. <laughs> Test, you like me, never could. Yes. Now, were you a journalism major or a creative writing major or anything? Or no? no, psychology, psychology German, major. and okay. education, okay. So sociology. So writing psych, yeah. was part of your life, but a different part of your yes. life. Yes. Now, you do some social. Let me just kind of get So, Peggy, the writer, we got, we got a little bit of a taste of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also a psychology, social work, sociology. Tell me about that part of it. I always wanted to know what made people tick, okay. which is very helpful when you're writing you're writer, books about yes. characters. Yeah. And so I decided to uh, major in psychology. Okay. And I started out um, with, like, triple major, sociology, education, mm -hmm. and then German. You're going to conquer all the worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I went through school, I liked psychology more because it was more individual. Okay. And I right. liked that one-on-one, -on -one, okay. figuring out how people think. Now, so you have an undergraduate degree in psychology? Yes. Okay, and did you do graduate work or in the counseling or anything or what? I um, have half a master's in okay. business, okay. <laughs> but then I had babies, and okay. so I only Family have half first. a master's, That's yes. Right. Family <laughs> first, okay. Now, just to take us all up to date, because we're going to spend most of the show in the writing. Mm -hmm. So you left Ohio. Yes. Come to the Bay to retire. Yeah, yes. well, for uh, okay. 15 years in New Jersey, then, okay. then down and to then Maryland. And then you're working your way down. Yes, okay, all right. yes. And now in Centerville, in Centerville uh, besides writing, you're also helping with a nursing home, I believe? Corsica Hills Nursing okay. Home. I'm right. a social services specialist. Right. 
So I help um, the department um, take care of all the needs of the residents, both short term and long term. Anything under the social services umbrella. Which is everything. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and do it fast. <laughs> now, your husband retired now, or is he a part time worker? Uh, no, he actually works out of state. Oh, out of state. Mm -hmm. oh, so you, you're juggling all types of things. Yes. You get the writing, yeah. the social work. Now, kids? Uh, three grown children. Here or around? Or? Uh, one is in Maryland and. Okay. Um, well, and then one's in Frederick and one's up at still okay. in New Jersey. Oh, great. Grandkids yet or too soon? One grandchild. Oh, great. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one year great. old. <laughs> now, let me ask you, again, flipping back a little bit, were you an avid reader? I mean, you obviously yes. Okay, what, yes. as a young, let's go way back to the high school days. Any special authors or every, anything you could? I don't remember authors. I just remember I, I loved reading. books and um, Elementary school, um, I knew I loved books, like, okay. and I kept begging the teachers, when are we going to get hardcover books? When are we going to get Because I grew up on um, C, you know, Dick, Dick and Jane Sally yeah, books, right, yeah, right, right. C. Dick Run. Yeah. And um, so in third grade, we finally got our first hardcover book. It was about that thick. Oh, you were excited. And I was so disappointed. I read it in one week because it was more of C. Dick Run, C. Jane oh, right. Run. And so you're a little disappointed. It, yeah, so my reading level was far advanced of my grade level. Okay. I mean, Nancy Drew. Oh, Henry Nancy Drew, I loved. Yes. Okay, okay. Nancy Drew, yes, I did right. enjoy so you, Nancy you were Drew. reading everything. Mm -hmm. How about now, college level? Get on, I mean, we, any particular authors or. Again, reading all the time. I don't really remember oh, because okay. I had a lot of homework. I can't remember anything I read in college. With either. all those majors, I, I, okay. yeah, I right. just don't So, quite an remember. avid reader, mm -hmm. writing since, since eight, mm -hmm. mom, uh, so you're in Ohio, New Jersey, and now Maryland, right? Yes. You're in Maryland, right? Yes. Now, let me ask you when did you decide you wanted to be, probably at eight, but when did you decide you want to write books and publish them and get them out? Was that always, I mean, is that from eight on? Or? No, I always enjoyed writing. Actually, my first book that I co-authored okay. actually came out of sorrow and it was miscarriage Okay. Um, because I miscarried my first two pregnancies. Right. This is a, per a book about a personal experience of going through two miscarriages? And it, well, it's counseling for, wom uh, oh, for okay. women and okay. couples that um, lose a baby. And that's what started me writing books. It's not really anything I thought about. Right. But um, you want to I, help people. I like to work. help yeah. people. And when it happened to me, of course, the first thing I did was go to the library and the bookstore trying to find Get books on it. And there, yeah. was, there, wa there was nothing okay. on the market. Okay. So that's actually um, how I book. how I started Who writing. Who did you co-author with? You said um, other other couples oh, that, that, that lost. Thing. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, this is through the Centering Corporation, and it now is in multiple still languages, and okay. it's still available. If somebody wanted to get that, go online or it's to Centering Corporation. Right. Yes. Centering mm -hmm. Corporation. Very good. Now, where'd you go from? The, so you obviously you were in the nonfiction world. When you started, yes. Now, what mm -hmm. followed that? Uh, stayed in the same course, or did you get jump off in a, a different direction? I then I started novels. Okay. Um, uh, I had belonged to the Romance Writers of America, so um, now what's that? That sounds good. Anyway. Romance Writers of America is, is a national organization, international organization okay. of um, uh, women writer? and men who write romances. Oh, good stuff. Okay. That's how I started. Um, I wrote two novels, which are um, still in the desk yeah, drawer. We have those. Oh, no, <laughs> no the they're desk still in the okay. desk drawer. Yeah. One day. One day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know a lot more now, so okay. someday I'll You're rewrite keep them. It in the desk yeah. Drawer. Okay. Those right. re those were a good start. Think how many great novels are in the desk drawers <laughs> of millions of homes that one day, with a little bit of luck, will come out. Okay. After they're rewritten. After yes. they're dead, maybe. Okay. And then um, when I moved to New Jersey, uh, there was a. a that because a husband's job. Now you're in yes. New Jersey with mm -hmm. kids, it sounds like, and a husband working. Right. right. Okay. And so um, when I moved to New Jersey, um, there was um, a writer's group there. And the more I was in writing group, um, I love mysteries. Okay. And so a lot of opportunities came for contests to, um, I joined Sisters in Crime. And which is uh, for mystery writers. And I loved the short story because in a novel you have a lot of room right. to tell a story. Sure. 
to become a better writer, if you're c limited in your words, you have to become a you better harder, writer. Yes. And so I started doing short stories. Found out that that was kind of my forte. Okay, the short stories. The, the okay. short stories. And so then I just started writing mystery short stories. And and were they getting published? Or? And, and, and getting published or publishers contacting me and Terrific. asking if I would submit a, a story. story. That's where oh, you feel, right. start feeling like an author is when publishers call you. you. Oh, right. And um, so... Um, and this is while you're in New Jersey. So you're raising kids and writing books yes. on the side. Okay. Yes. All right. And and then it's only recently that I started writing children's books. Oh, let's talk about that. Okay. okay. Uh, talk about ponies and all types of magical stuff. Okay. Well, um, I um, spent a year bed-bound and home-bound here in Centerville okay. um, because uh, I just had a something that happened to me physically that left me partially um, handicapped I'm in my sorry, feet yeah. and ankles. Yeah. And so when you're laying in bed for a year, you, you have, have a, a lot year. of time to, mm -hmm. to think and write. And I liked, just like the miscarriage book, I like to take things that are hard in life and turn them around and into something good. Okay. And I thought that children who are, I call them differently abled, okay. Um, I don't like to define people by what they can't do. Right. Okay. Um, so I decided that there are no books for children who are differently abled. And as my w in my work as a therapeutic harpist, I often am... We didn't even mention that. Yes. So on top, wait, let's go, oh, we'll time out, take a time out here. <laughs> so we've got kids, we have a husband, we're moving, we're writing the books, and you're a, a social worker, basically. Tell me about the harp experience. And now I promise you, we're going to come right back to the ponies. Okay. I've been playing harp for about 15 years. Uh, Self-taught or lessons? Um, no, I, I, I took um, lessons from someone that studied under Salcedo, okay. who's one of the leading um, harp instructors. And two years, I took it up as an adult. So two years into it, I discovered that people could play the harp for patients in the hospital and help them heal. And and just relaxing, calming music, and the results have been very interesting in terms of yeah. the effects. I'm sorry. It helps them relieve pain. Yeah, it helps yeah. them relax and f get to sleep. Um, it can ease when they're transitioning. And so uh, I took th three different programs. I have three certifications to provide music to So you go in the hospital room, calm the patient down by or their playing homes, a, oh, where home. I go wherever the patient is. And so some of that work, I was working with children who were also hospice patients or um, differently abled. And, and, and again, mm -hmm. let me up. How often do you do that now? I mean, is it a regular um, type Two thing? to three days a week. Do you really? Mm -hmm. You go to local mm -hmm. hospitals too? Uh, yeah, well, I want to yeah, see your, <laughs> your schedule. I know, but <laughs> before you go, and I know you're working your way back to the pony. Mm -hmm. Tell the quick story we told off air. You went to Ireland, which has on its flag the harp. The harp. People think of Guinness beer, whether it doesn't matter, it has a harp. Harp. How many harps did you find in Ireland? I did not find any. <laughs> I, w I actually went for a month. I okay. rented um, a, a little house on a mountain at the base of a mountain. Um, and I wanted to spend the whole month writing, and I was going to rent a harp while I was over okay. there to keep up my skills, and could not find one available, <laughs> and I thought that was so We're odd. We're going to contact the Irish <laughs> Embassy here. Now, I've interrupted twice. Let me put it. So you wanted to help children with special needs or special abilities. Yes, because they don't, they don't have any books where they're a main character. Okay. And so then I wrote this book, Sweetheart's Gift, and it's about an able-bodied girl who has uh, suffers an accident and is left in a wheelchair. Okay. And the pony, uh, Sweetheart, who is a real pony, um, he's a Shikatik pony um, that did the pony swim down in Virginia. Um, he also is a character in the book. And the two of them to, together, they help each other out and they discover even though they have some setback in their life, they can still life help can others. Okay. And that becomes their gift. And this pony is for real? This pony is for real. Um, and we're going to come back when you talked about the pony, where we can get that book, okay? But okay. let's go back to this. Um, Sweetheart has a heart on his right shoulder and on the opposite shoulder is a white angel wing and on his rump he has a perfect Celtic heart. Actually a help. Uh, yes, heart. yes. I mean, so it looks like we can find a harp in Chestertown but not in Ireland. All right? Okay. <laughs> right. Now how did you, how did this work out that, how did you come in contact with this, this 
one of the I, accidents? Or? I, no, I was contacted by this woman one day um, wanting to know if I could teach her daughter two harp songs. She was in a pageant um, mm -hmm. to try to um, work her way up to become Miss America. Oh, okay. And she wanted to know if I could teach her the harp in two songs in five weeks. Two songs. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, but I kept talking to the woman to find out her needs, and then I realized I could use my training as a therapeutic harpist to, to teach her. Okay. Um, it's om almost an impossible task to teach mm, the harp two and two songs, but um, we did it. And th th my student was from Chicoteague, Virginia. Oh, wow. And so I had always wanted to go to see the pony swim. And so they invited me, and I, photography is a hobby of mine went down simply to take Couple photographs pictures, of, sure. of the pony. And this h horse, he, of course he was a little um, three-month-old colt, mm. was the town's favorite. And he, because, because of the, of the heart, marking. they called yeah. him heart on my sleeve. Oh. It was the pony everyone wanted. And um, I was just lucky enough to win the auction. Oh, so you, okay. And um, get the pony. And I got the oh, pony. I didn't know you, own, you still own the pony. I still oh, own I the pony. Know. Okay, and the pony is now somewhere in and, Chestertown, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you owned it. Okay. Oh, yes. I, I own him, and um, I'm teaching him tricks, and someday he wants to entertain um, children and all the young at heart. Another job for you. Yes, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> the, it's fun. But the, you can see uh, the attraction to this pony. Beautiful, you call, I call them socks, you call them stockings. Uh, uh, beautiful white stockings and all four feet, I believe. The heart, the harp. I mean, it's a pretty amazing animal, isn't it? It, it is, it is. So, okay, let's go back to the, the pony, the story about the child. Where mm -hmm. do, That book is still in print. Yes. Where can we get that if we it want It is that? available on Amazon, both okay. as a book and a, um, for uh, Kindle, and it's also available at Dog Ear Publishing. Now, Peggy, let me ask you this. If I'm a parent, I'm home, I'm saying, wow, my kid likes horses, uh, the, the unique story of a child with mm -hmm. special needs. Uh, age group that's appropriate for, say, the parents to read or the child. What's your, what are you shooting for there? Most of the people at book signings are like age 2 to 10 because oh, the book can be the, can be read to them. Okay. Um, it has some nice illustrations in it and um, and then young readers who can read on their own. Okay, and it's a nice positive story. It, Something it goes is. unfair a little bit in life turns into a positive. Right. Okay, now right. where do we go from there in the uh, book list? Well, then the, then the second book is uh, Sweetheart's Treasure Hunt. Yeah, Sweetheart, to remind everybody, is our favorite pony, right? Yes. Your favorite pony. Yes, and on the cover, he sees some children going to a birthday party, and it sets the horse wondering what is the greatest treasure on earth. Okay. And so he sets out on a quest, asking all of the animals in and around the barn what their favorite tre treasure is. This book and all the books, um, because there's others coming that are already at the publisher, are written in verse. Oh, wow. And um, so he's not quite satisfied with the answer, so he, he faces his fear of the night and goes off deep into the forest at night to speak to the wise owl. Oh, to find out what the, the, what the, what, what the, great, what the greatest, greatest treasure is. And, of course, the answer centers around love and loving everyone, even if they're different oh, from very us. Good. Now, again, two to ten? Um, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and an ideal book for hey, mom and dad reading to you at night? Which yes, we I always say the books are for those young at heart. So okay, it, any like, age, any yes, age. Yeah, okay. it, You'll find an enlightening message. Does and the owl, without giving it away, does the owl give a uh, sweetheart the... He is, a wise, okay. he is a wise owl, and he asks questions, and okay. sweetheart figures it out himself. Oh, okay. That's like, and because that's how good mentors and good Sweet guides Sweetheart's do. Sweetheart's moment of zen. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, very good. Oh, yes. a, so that was number two. Yes. Okay, and again, we can get that. Um, this one is available also on Amazon. It comes in soft cover, hard cover, and then um, okay. the e-book for can, Kindle. Can I just ask you, Barbara Perch, I think I'm seeing the name. Uh, yeah. Is that a local person, or where's your illustrator from? Or? Um, she is um, my sister. Oh, your sister? Yes. <laughs> She did this. anything this family doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can write. I can't draw. Okay. She's the artist. <laughs> She's the artist. Um, she did the illustrations for me, and right now she is a missionary in Uganda um, with the pygmies. Really? Yes. Really? <laughs> 
Now, she live here. Where's home? Is she still in Ohio? Or is she no, here? she's in Uganda right oh, now. For, where yeah, where she, is home when she comes back home? In, te in Texas. Oh, Texas. In okay. Texas, yes. All right, we got Sweetheart 1, Sweetheart 2. Where do we go next? Um, the book that is currently being illustrated is Sweetheart Stops the Bullies. Okay, now that's going to be obviously a book on it, bullying. You want to it elaborate be out a little in, bit? Uh, oh. Hopefully in a few months. Okay, and, and we're going to have you back when it comes out. I hope okay, you come back. Okay. okay. And that is um, going to come out by Life Rich Publishing, which is an imprint of Reader's Digest. Great. So and bullying is a hot topic in all of our schools. It's this tragedy that goes on every single day. It is. What some poor kids have to go through. Okay. And now, sweetheart, what's Sweetheart's role in the bullying? Um, he um, overhears um, horses in the barn. Um, bullying um, a blind horse oh, okay. and and gets angry about it and stops it befriends the horse the blind horse mm -hmm. and um, and then they kind of do some naughty things like leaving the barn but without <laughs> okay. the humans knowing to All go right. play out in the outside and um, the blind horse actually ends up saving everyone from right. a disaster. Okay. And good. so again, the whole theme of the book is no matter what our um, challenges are, or if we have a handicap, or if we can't quite do something as well as someone else, that we all have value. And we can do good and we can help others. Yes. Okay, and that mm -hmm. comes out again in May, is that right? In a few months, in okay. a few minutes, it, it depends. Is your sister illustrating that? No, no, okay. because the, <laughs> she's, the, the, she's in, in, okay. in Keep Africa. her home, yes. keep her home, okay. <laughs> I would love to. And then um, the fourth book that I'm researching is going to um, center around um, the skills of an aunt, autistic child okay. who helps Sweetheart solve a mystery. All right. So there's one, two published, am I right? Yes. And two at the publisher. Am One's at the publishers, okay. and then the, the fourth one I'm researching, researching. and, okay. and, well, good. and okay. we'll soon write that. And a delightful series. Uh, and you're going to continue with the Sweetheart series? I mean, is this it it is. I, I want to put out at least one a year. Um, or, or more, but at least one a year. Okay. It, it's a series because I think again, I think children who are differently abled should have their own book series, sure. and and be um, featured in books. And it sounds like the type of books parents should be reading to all the children, just because, like you said, the tolerance idea. Yes. Hey, come on, just because we're a little different, we still have a, a sense of an important sense of values, and we do a lot of good in society. Right. right. Okay. Right. Now, what are all these other goodies here? Well, these are my nonfiction books. Okay, talk um, about this. Um, I uh, teach people how uh, I run online courses for um, turn your passion into profit. Okay. So um, I instruct people to take something they love and they can turn it into a, and they can a make business some money from it. Okay. and earn money. And so a lot of it. Um, some of these are reference books that I first started out um, when I was. Hey, tell in me, let me Tell mm -hmm. me about your courses. Where the, where can they find these courses? If so, I'm at home and I love golf. <laughs> so you, you're going to try to help me. Hey, Fred, I'm going to show you how you can make your golf game in some way. You can make some money. In theory. In in theory. You haven't seen my golf game, so you know how better it is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I could help you on golf, but, uh, <laughs> okay. but the concept is the same as far as taking something you love and building a business. Okay. That I know how to how to do, and contact me because it used to be a. Is course. there an email you like or a website? Well, um, how should they do that? Author Peggy Jagley okay. at AOL.com. Okay, Peggy, say that one more time. Author Peggy Jagley at AOL.com. And then go right on. They and email get me what, if whatever they're interested in, and I can respond. Um, you know, with the information okay. that let they me, need. Let me jump in. Your cookbook. Uh, that oh, jumped yeah. just because I saw the Zen on the back. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Tell me about your cookbook. Um, a publisher um, contacted me on that because um, she also uh, was the it, publisher for Who Died in okay. Here. That I, I have I'm a short story on. Okay. Okay. And she asked me to write haiku, and so okay. several of my hai several of my haiku are in that, and that's a actually a recipe. Right uh, yeah, okay. it's the it's the right one. It's actually a recipe book, Hot dish and, haiku. and it has haiku in. So okay. like I I wrote a I I probably wrote a dozen. I think she like printed six or seven of them in here. So it was a unique way. Okay. And, and this is the publisher asking you to write it. Oh, you yes. You didn't initiate it. They, uh, it yeah, the, yeah, that's, you, that's you're what You're at that great. point in your career, right? Yeah, yeah, that feels really good when a publisher oh, contacts sure. you when they're familiar a with your writing. Anyway. Yes. Hey, write me a book on, <laughs> okay, good. Very yeah. good. And um, 
also, I really, I started um, a writer's group at Centerville okay. Library for um, aspiring, well, for serious writers. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether they're established or aspiring. Um, we get together as a group. And our group's a little bit different because not only do we want to improve our writing, we want to improve the promotion and selling books. And you know, How many to people do you have in the group? Um, we have a, a, an active group of probably about 10. Oh, that's big. And, then, of it. and, and, and yes, and then others co you know, come and go. Um, and so it's a great group. And then I am also launching both online programs or one-on-one -on -one coaching for aspiring authors. Very good. Um, I think it's really important. Um, to me, it's my peacekeeping uh, effort. I think if we understand people more, uh, if you understand people, you don't judge. If you, you know, and sure. then it promotes peace. Understanding it, it, is if a we long accept. way. Okay. If we understand, we accept, and then there's more peace. Yeah. Hey, and, let me go back. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to cover both these again. You're right. If someone's out there saying, "Hey, look at I, I, I like to write. I've got a couple things published. Can they become a member of the group, or is it oh, by yes. invitation? How, how will they do that? Ju uh, we meet the first and fourth Thursday so at 7 o'clock in, in the Centerville. meeting room okay. in Centerville and um, they can show up or again they can just email me at author Peggy Jagley at AOL.com. Should they bring any, I mean should they bring samples of their writing? If they or? would like to, okay. sure. Okay. It, it's um, it's voluntary if you want to read. And, and if you have you, 10 people showing up. Yeah. I'm just impressed. That's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. terrific. And have all these people had something published, or that's why they're showing up? Uh, no, there's a mixture between okay. published authors and aspiring, but we all help each other out. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you said what you do, take turns reading other, each other's work, or how do you do I, it? If they want to. It's all voluntary. Okay. And um, we usually have a themed night, and um, I survey everyone, so we, I plan programs based on the interest of the group. Very good. So okay. uh, it's always more. You're thing. staying busy, Peggy. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, oh, tell yes. me, I interrupt you. Tell me about the group and the tolerance and understanding other people. I interrupted you. I really want to help people write the book they dream about. Okay. Um, if I had a dollar for every time someone has told me at book signings that someday they want to write a book, sure. I would be You'd very, be very person. rich. Yes, you would. And so I really want to promote peace by getting people to write the book of the, that they're dreaming about. Sure. And it's fine if it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, fiction, sometimes people need a distraction from life's problems or they need to laugh. If it's nonfiction, it's usually because um, the author is trying to help someone through um, some universal trouble that we have and sharing their insights. And so um, I, have online self-paced programs that I'll be launching soon. Good. So if someone just wants to write at home by themselves, all the way up to one-on-one -on -one coaching, taking everyone from concept to a published book that they can hold in their hand. And then again, they can reach you through your email you've yes. been giving out and say, hey, yes. I'm interested when you fully develop that and get yes. it out there, right? Yes. And Peggy, we're, that was a quick half an hour. We've got about three minutes <laughs> left, so let's summarize everything, all right? It's gonna all take right. me 20 minutes to summarize a 10 minute show. <laughs> The ch the children's books, uh, yes. they're the ones that jumped out of me in your bio, all right? Mm -hmm. Just review again what you've got again. All right, this is the Sweet Pony series. And may I mention one other, the Kiari Hope. Um, okay. I am doing uh, um, this Which one, this one okay. Kiari Hope. This is a, a prototype. Right. Um, my daughter suffers from Kiari malformation. It's what, a, tell us what Kiari malformation is. It is a... a birth defect uh, where the brain sits too far back in okay. your head and okay. part of the brain is exposed to the opening of the skull. Okay. Many people have it and don't realize it. Mm. Um, babies can have it all the way up through adults and it's life-threatening um, if, if they have a trauma and like a head trauma which it was what happened to my daughter. And so I am donating my services as editor and my publishing services and um, calling for submissions for family members um, to submit true stories, stories of hope. Of how this affected their life. Kiari Hope okay. and all the proceeds are gonna go to um, Conquer Kiari to, um, for research to Terrific. help find Terrific. a solution to now, this. Now if they're interested in this, contacting who again? 
again at, <laughs> okay. at author. You're going to get a thousand emails by the <laughs> time you get That's fine. Home. I hope so. Okay. Author Peggy Jagley at AOL.com. Okay. Well, Peggy, I'm afraid to ask you, uh, with uh, about a minute and a half left, what's next besides <laughs> another? I mean, what are you, what are you, where are you heading next? I mean, um, well, Kiari Hope in the next children's book, okay. and then I'm also going back to um, writing a trilogy, uh, a, mm -hmm. a police trilogy. Uh, um, fictional account uh, of a police department? Uh, 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 yes, and um, yeah, so I, I am going to try You've my hand at that. You've got a couple things on the stove, right? Yes, You're going to stay always, busy. Yes, okay. always. Well, let's, let's end up with this. If anybody is watching the show and they say, wow, the kids' books, uh, the cookbook, uh, all these books on the table, some self-help programs and writer's program, that starts again. To contact you with, hey, I've got 50 questions to ask you, give them that email again. Author Peggy Jagley at AOL.com, and Jagley is spelled J A E G l y great piggy and again if i'm a parent i just said wow that what a great series that sounds a little pony with these interesting birthmarks again to get those they can do what um they can a amazon um, or whatever they can find both on amazon um, or email me and I can give other okay. options. Peggy, I don't know how you carry all this stuff in <laughs> everywhere you go. All right. Well, look, this has been a pleasure to have you. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you, Peggy, to come back when the th next book comes out, okay? All right. And then I'm hopefully, hopefully we can make a trip to see this beautiful pony. With that, oh, yes, possible, because he right. just loves children and loves people. Oh, I people. think it'd be great, okay. And I just want to see a harp, because I didn't see many harps in Ireland either. I've okay? played the harp for the, uh, for the pony, and... Um, when I did the first time, he came over in a stall and kissed me. You kidding me? Okay, mm -hmm. with a harm. Well, wait, let me ask the very last question. I promise you. Okay. What do you do to relax? Or is <laughs> writing relaxing? Family? What do you do? To, what do you? I mean, is there a time out? Hey, I want some Peggy time. What do you do? Um, I don't have much free time. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it, no. But um, the time I spend training my pony okay. is really um, my downtime. That's your downtime. That's because um, a horse will tell you, will reflect back to you where you're at. So mm -hmm. you have to be focused, um, and the horse will know if you're, you're not. You're not paying it. you got to live right in the moment, right? Okay. Right, okay. right. Which is good. Well, Peggy, thank you again for coming. All right. Thank you for having me. It's Great. been a pleasure. Good. My name's Fred McNeil, and you've been watching QAC TV 7. You're watching Papa's Story. And what's great about the show, we have authors like Peggy Jagley come in, talk about all these wonderful books, all right? And remember, these are people living in Centerville, all right, by way of Ohio and by way of New Jersey, all right? Yes. Peggy, thank you again. Thank you so much. Fred McNeil, my time's up. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.